So to introduce the session a little bit, uh, when we started talking about the possibility of a working group focused on class struggle, we had a couple of ideas in mind. Uh, the first is obviously that the conditions of the world right now are just absolutely mind boggling. Uh, to use some of the phrases from today's reading, it is a world on fire. We're in a state of wreckage trying to examine what is going on. And at best, these conditions are generally theorized as uh, colliding crises. And at worst, they're dismissed as fleeting. And yet there is this wonderful, rich tradition uh, of scholarship, activism, popular education, and community development that provides us with a materialist diagnosis for what is happening at this point in time, uh, as well as a glimpse of what revolutionary praxis might look like. And these strong and rich traditions uh, for many of us here today come from the struggles of queer people, indigenous nations, black struggles, anti-racist struggles, and of course, feminist struggles. And so our hope was with the working group uh, was to try to create a place uh, for people to engage in a critical ana analysis, reflection and discussion while rethinking what it means to do a class struggle analysis. And since so many people have shown up today uh, making the choice to come and do this kind of work, uh, we can assume that at least a few people are interested in figuring out what a class struggle vantage point is, what it means for critical thinking, and what it means for both theorizing and shifting our material conditions. And so I'm going to introduce Professor Shahzad Mojab, uh, and she's gonna share some of her thoughts on how we engage in a, a class struggle analysis. So for most of us here this afternoon, Professor Mojab uh, needs no introduction. Anyone who has ever had the pleasure of working with her knows that she is a tireless intellectual force. She pushes everyone around her to be sharper, more historically informed, and most importantly, to be precise in the way that we use dialectical inquiry. Her commitment to dialectical investigation is evident across her numerous books and publications, and they are far too numerous to name. Uh, but I will draw our attention to a few of them. Uh, she was the editor of Marxism and Feminism. She co-wrote Revolutionary Learning, Marxism, Feminism and Knowledge. Uh, she wrote that with Dr. Sarah Carpenter. Uh, she is editor for the book series with Peter Lang uh, on Kurdish people, history and politics. Dr. Mojab's commitment to revolutionary pedagogy, popular education and social struggle is evident through her engagement with the arts, including documentary filmmaking and a dance project titled No Woman's Island, sorry, No Woman's Land, which captured the experiences of refugee women. And so it is her commitment to dialectical investigation and revolutionary learning that makes her the perfect person to begin the working group series. Uh, I have no doubt that she's going to set an excellent tone for the series itself. Uh, for those who know her, you will uh, recognise that the tone might be rigorous. And uh, she's going to provide us with a framework for engaging with the project of rethinking the theory, method and praxis of class struggle. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Sharsad. Thank you very much, uh, Genevieve. And uh, I'm going to start with the um, land acknowledgement in order to frame our discussion for today. The University of Toronto is on indigenous land, which for thousands of years has been the traditional land of the Huron, Wendat and Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is a still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, many of whom continues to fight against colonization, extractive industries, carceral estates, and gendered sexual oppression. To understand contemporary class struggle and class structure, we must begin by acknowledging the historical colonial violence and exploitation that resulted in conquest and expropriation of indigenous land to, us, to establish and consolidate 
capitalist imperialist social relations. We also acknowledge the ongoing legacies of patriarchal colonialism, capitalism and imperialism that continues to displace and dispossess people. And more and more, we experience these relations in their fascist political and, in the, uh, and ideological form. As you can see, I'm, I'm trying to sort of, of, of do this land acknowledgement in the context of uh, our discussion and, and also what we stand for politically and really trouble this uh, way of uh, ritualistic uh, land acknowledgement, which is uh, dominant. And uh, also, I want to thank, by you know, my three brilliant uh, students and uh, um, colleagues. I would uh, consider them Shirin Hargu, Genevieve Ricci. Thank you so much, Genevieve, for your uh, beautiful introduction and, and generous uh, concepts and generous words about me and my work, which is all of our works, and then also Vesal Abu Qaddam for um, collaborating in, in creating this working group. And I also really appreciate the, your presence, and um, I'm looking forward to um, um, have um, your inputs and your engagement. And throughout this series that we have, I'm sure that that we will have uh, wonderful uh, presenters and, and facilitators of uh, forthcoming sessions. And I'm, I'm in advance of, of all of this, would like to thank them for accepting and, and, and rather enthusiastically, and, and we were surprised that how fast and, and quick they accepted our invitation uh, in order to engage with us and, and, and also for us to have the opportunity to hear their, their, their work. So I think that the series, as um, also Genevieve mentioned briefly, is um, envisioned as a theoretical uh, exploration of the notion of class. And as the title suggests, it is a revisiting of this concept in its theoretical, methodological, and praxis. And, and, and hence, the concept of class struggle in, in the title. And then also it is important that we realize that we are a quote-unquote a working reader group, which means that we will engage with closed reading of text and expect that everybody's intervention, discussion, so that we can build collectively a community of radical learners. So one may ask why class again? Why not focusing only on, on race, gender, sexuality, and class, or any of, of these concepts? Or why not studying how poverty, inequality, discrimination, exclusions are affecting us all, in particular under the condition of a global pandemic? My answer briefly for now is that we need an expansive, theoretically coherent and powerful analysis to first unravel the complexity of what we are experiencing and observing around us, and then move deeper to the roots of it all. I'll come back to this point. But however, for us here is, is that each session and, and the assigned readings are certainly planned to get us closer to that sort of the root causes of, of all these uh, sort of um, difficulties and, 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 and ills of, of the uh, society that we are observing. And then map out the complex so social relations of power that we are aiming to understand and analyze and, and therefore focusing on the notion of class. And each session focuses on aspect of a totality of social relations. And this totality for this particular moment of the history 
is capitalist social relations. And it's, we, they discuss the readings and, and we'll have the conversation about the understanding of, of the history of the formation of, 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 the, um, of, of this um, um, capitalist social relations, its emergence as a colonial power to its contemporary moment of capitalist imperialist stage. Therefore, what we have is, is that um, we are doing a, a historical and materialist understanding of the conception of capitalism and capitalist social relations. This is important, and I would like to stress the importance of it because we are understanding capitalism first as social relations and not things. And, and, and which means that it is more than just understanding of capitalism as economic force, but also as social, political, cultural, ideological force that as a, in its totality encompasses self, society, and social relations. And then also understanding capitalism in its glo as, as a global force, not as a popular notions of globalization or neoliberalism that are most often considered forces that are without capitalism, which means that understanding of globalization and a neoliberalism neoliberalism as forces severed or detached from capitalist social relations operating independently from capitalist imperialism. Let me give you an example. Recently, in, in, in preparation for writing a, an encyclopedia entry on uh, women and, and education in the Middle East, I've been reviewing the, the rise of what is called, you know, this, the rise of, of neoliberalism in the region. And then usually it, it sort of marks from the 1980s uh, throughout the world. In these hundreds and hundreds of pages of, of, of reading that I'm doing is, is that there is extensive data and a lot of analysis that address the question of poverty, inequality, discrimination, the use of, of the, the language of um, sort of un, uh, un, um, uh, unequal uh, sort of or, 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 or an even development throughout the, the, the region. Massive data and information from the World Bank and, on, and IMF and on all of it. No one mentioned of the class structure, class formation, and class struggle in the region. There are few exceptions, and, 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 and we are lucky that we will be reading those, ex those texts, especially by, by Adam Hanier. But overall, every concept that you can envision in, in terms of, of, of explaining the condition of, of the rise of the impact and, 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 and um, uh, of the rise of, of neoliberalism in, in the region is mentioned in, in, in these documents, but no concept of, of, of class. In fact, even the, the, the sort of, of, of the conditions or, 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 or the events such as IMF riot, which means that uh, they, uh, the rise of youth, workers, women against the implementation of the IMF policies, which created the condition of, of the privatization and the weakening of, of, of the states in, in, in that region. But even these riots, even these sort of, of, of the bread riots, IMF riots, riots against the privatization, never or very rarely, as, as, as I mentioned, has been conceived as class struggle. They are conceived as crisis or unrest, but not the uh, ideas of class and, and, and cla class formation and, and also 
um, they um, uh, class struggle. And, and, and we see this, the same thing in our research um, on migration and refugees that are mostly, they, we hear about the concept of crisis of migration and migration is, is always being discussed. Is it natural? Is it voluntarily or involuntary? But never talk about the fact that how, what, how our analysis will be different if we conceive the idea of migration and refugee also as class formation reformation, restructuring, restructuring, and, 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 and also, um, therefore, uh, the way that it, it uh, uh, impacts our, uh, the, the notion of class struggle. However, it is also important for us to, to note that the texts and the discussion that we are going to have, there will be a, and, and most of our, our, our readings, they employ divergent theoretical approaches in explicating the history of colonialism and the capitalist and imperialism and class struggle. Often they recognize that colonialism and capitalism are social formations achieved through plundering of lands, genocide of indigenous uh, populations, war and occupation, and much more in, in, in uh, most in, in, in inst instances, different sort of, of, of a infrastructural development that has been created and, and, and how that has uh, impacted um, the creation of, of the uh, capitalist colonialist structure. And it is important that, for example, in the book that we are going to read for next session, the book by Manu Karoka, Empires, Tracks, Indigenous Nations, Chinese Workers, and the Transcontinental Railroad, we see that here how even the, the, uh, the whole practice of, of the creation of in infrastructure, but, but also that we can um, apply to, for example, the, the discovery of, of oil, extraction of, of minerals and rich resources, every aspect of, 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 of that uh, sort of a history, it, it's uh, contributing to this uh, uh, very important history of, of colonialism, um, capitalism, and, and, and imperialism. I'm going to read a quote from um, Manu's, uh, uh, Manu Karuka's Car uh, book, which I think that it is important when he says that within infrastructures, we can feel both the imperative and the eminent possibilities of decolonization. For imperial state infrastructures are sites of vulnerability, sites to assemble and deploy technical and political knowledge in order to preempt the breakdown of imperial authority. Infrastructures of colonialism are infrastructures of policing and military occupation and have been central to the experimental statecraft and social engineering of colonial power. Railroad colonialism entailed not just the production of imperial infrastructure, but just as important, the development of the modern imperial state form. To understand the transcontinental railroad in terms of continental imperials is to understand the development of the United States of, of, of America as an imperial state. So I, I think that this way of really understanding infrastructure, social sort of, of, of a structural development as a way of relating it to the history of colonialism imperialism and the way that classes are, are, are formed with some of us sort of extending it to, to, to that level is very important. Related to this, I want to mention that uh, there is a, a, a fabulous three-part series on, on CBC 
program ideas are happening which was originally broadcasted in 1992 and and this is the uh, thomas king's uh, based on 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 the originally based on on, on thomas king's uh, book that just after that it came out the inconvenient indian a curious account of native people in, in north america where he talks about the relationship between destruction occupation of the land elimination of, of buffalo herds and and then um the coming to that area of 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 canada railroads and the relationship between railroads and military and militarization and and the state formation these are very important and and this is the in this program as well as 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 the the book uh by manu karuka we see that how all of these um, sort of social uh, activities are, are um, historically related to each other. Now, let me come to the point that I mentioned that there are different um, sort of, of, of theoretical um, um, understanding and divergent in, in, in the texts that we are reading. But I want to put forward how I understand and the way that I use the notion of, of class, which is dialectical historical materialism, that I use it as a method of inquiry in, in terms of, of, of understanding uh, class. So class, like other concepts that we have, like race, gender, sexuality, are highly contested, even among the, the, the scholars that all of them are, are using or considering themselves as socialist, feminist, anti-colonialist, or, or, or uh, um, uh, you know, trying to sort of, of, of create uh, and, and uh, um, alternative knowledge production, that they are use all these concepts and they find this concept in this, in, uh, dispensable in, in their analysis, but, they, but they, they, it is also hugely con, uh, contested. So I think that a host of theoretical positions ranging from liberalism, to post-structuralism and post-colonialism have either discarded one or more of these concepts or have privileged one over the other. Moving from these theoretical positions to those that find the concept of class relevant to the understanding of the capitalist world, we find a great divide in theorizations and dialectical analysis. Dominant liberal sociology, for example, analyzes class as groupings based on income, status, or rank, or depict classes as, as Lenin would say, and I'm quoting him here, is, it, is that as large groups of people differing from each other by the place they occupy, in a historically determined system of social production by their relation, in most cases fixed and formulated in law to the means of production, by their role in the social organization of labor and consequently by the dim dimensions of the share of social income of which they dispose and the mode of acquiring it. So you can see that this is a, a mostly, um, um, I would say, liberal sociological approach to the notion of the class and then class differences, which to some extent, I would say that the very important work of, of Max Weber in, in terms of understanding of, of society and, and, and social differences is is um, also um, it, it's there in in terms of his understanding of of of, of class in in, in uh, capitalism. I have to mention, and I'll come back to it later on, that claiming this it doesn't mean that Marx gives us a 
a thorough or a coherent theory of, of, of class. We know that they, uh, the attempt in a full def a definition of class comes at the very end, very last few pages of, of uh, uh, volume three of, of, of Capital. But I think that there is a robust and uh, though a bit scattered um, arg uh, arguments in, in, Germ in, in German ideology and, and, and Grundrisse, which I think that when we put it together, we will get a pretty good uh, sort of, of, of a sense of, of uh, what is class, how it is uh, uh, sort of, of, of constituted, and, and um, what does it mean, uh, especially the formation of, of class and under the capitalist social relations. I come back to, to this uh, uh, point, uh, but at the same time, I just want to mention that um, in the ca in uh, under capitalism, based on, on on this Marxian analysis, we have two dominant classes: proletariat and bourgeoisie. However, it is also important that it is our task to define for contemporary moment uh, that what is proletariat. I definitely, we have moved beyond. The, the way that Marx uh, understood proletariat, but I, I, I think that um, we pretty much have a better understanding or easier understanding of, of the bourgeoisie, but I, I think that it is important to understand and, and have an expansive uh, understanding of, of proletariat, not to reify it and then turn it into a fetish, that it is turning it into a thing in itself. So I think that it is important also for us, dialectically speaking, to come back to this notion that capitalism produces not only commodities, not only surplus value, but it also produces and reproduces the capital relation itself. In this dialectical theorization, classes are not accidental or readily shifting aggregates of people stratified along the lines of employment, rank, income, or life chances. They are rather crucial constituents of the capitalist, social, economic, ideological, and even epistemological formation. So class in, in Marxist theory provides dividing lines, not only in the distribution of economic power, but also in epistemology, ontology, ideology, philosophy, and politics. From this perspective, class struggle involves much more than economic conflict between workers and capitalists. Some argue, in fact, that workers' struggle for economic welfare alone offers nothing more than a perpetuation or reproduction of capitalism. So the dialectical method allows us to move out of, of, of this circle and, and this sort of, of, of a um, linear understanding of um, the social relations by looking at the relationship between consciousness that it is agency our role our way of being and matter which is capitalism as the unity and a struggle of two opposites i know that i'm 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 going in into more of of the philosophical way of of, of talking about it but i'll explain it um, later on and uh, also understanding that these relate these sort of, of of a dialectical relationship between consciousness and and matter is not a, a, a dichotomy or it's not a binary, but it is the dialectical contradiction which the two sides in fact unite or co-occur coexist collide and are capable of negating each other 
and 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 by this notion of capability of of negating each other it means that creating something else uh, and 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 therefore um, the possibility for social transformation but it is not easy for us to just say that okay we we have to try to understand class and class formation and then class struggle because i i think that the the reproduction production and reproduction of capitalism could probably be less complicated if class relations uh, was the only source of the unequal division of power. It happens that societies are divided also along the lines of gender, race, language, religion, nationality, ethnicity, sexuality, only to name a few of, of, of the historical cleavages. Even more significant is the interlocking of these contradictions in ways that both threaten and also strengthen the production and reproduction of, of, of capitalist social relations. In the absence of a dialectical approach, I think that what we will do is we rely on most often on what I call methodological individualism and theoretical um, atomism that sort of treats these social differences as largely unrelated. So, and, and therefore most in, in the last few decades, I would say that there has been a huge retreat from the notion of, of class and by doing that, I think that there is a sort of, of, of a more um, uh, use of uh, falling into or, or, or descending to the notion of uh, the, uh, theoretically and then methodologically um, approaches that are you know, more on, on, on the emphasis on discourse, identity, language, body, effect, and desire. So although the various theoretical turns and twists have broadened our views of, of the intricacies of, let's say, gender and race relations, but the exclusion of class has, I believe, obscured the ways in which the social and economic formation of capitalism draws the contours of, of the class um, uh, of, of the, 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 the class struggle and, and, and also sort of, of, of a detaching um, the ways that class is gendered and race and, and, and therefore how this understanding is, is important. For example, in, in our reading uh, for today, in examining the wreckage, Nick Estes and Roxar Dunbar Ortiz begin by asking this question that they say why are race and white supremacy so central to class consciousness i think this is a very important question and i i and and we can also sort of say it that why class consciousness is also so central for understanding race white supremacy and the rise of, of fascism today. In the same um, uh, reading that we have, um, Estes and, and, and Don Bar Ortiz, they also quote Christina Hetherton's uh, work, which I think that it is an important piece and I would recommend that you all read it. It is called Not Just Being Right, but being free reflections on class, race, and Marxism, where she says that our theories have to be capacious enough to account for all these convergences, which means the convergences of class, race, gender, and, and, and all other social cleavages. So this means that if we want to move beyond the uncritical engagement with the notions of self, identity, and difference. 
to notions of social relations and material differences, we need to retrieve class. We need to revis revisit the notion of, of, of class and, and then understand that by centering or re sort of, of, of constituting class in our analysis, what kind of, of, of a social history uh, we can um, uh, sort of create and then also what kind of social transformation we can see. I think that the eviction of class from social theory also came with the installation of other notions that are mostly attitudinal, attitude, I can say it, behavioral, based on attitudes, based on, on, on culture. All of this, what they have done is, is that they have taken uh, many other concepts from us. For example, the concepts of the, the dialectical materialist relationship between the concept of uh, the relationship, sorry, the relationship of oppression, exploitation, and, and, and also the history of colonialism, capitalism, imperialism, and, and so on and so forth. By doing that, by this eviction of the notion of, of the class, what we have is, for example, in, in terms of understanding the women's movement or, or oppression against the women, what we have is, is, is that the, all of these have been culturalized, explained within the framework of culture, tradition, religion, and, 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 and everything except that the actual the materiality of social history and, and, and social uh, um, relations. So I think that this type of current culturalist understanding is both inadequate and to a large extent, I would say that they produce conformist uh, sort of political um, uh, policy and approach by reproducing and reaffirming the old frame of, of, of the um, sort of, of, of the idealist uh, way of, of, of understanding the worldview. This is what you know, we, we can sort of, of, of learn from Marx and, and, and Engels' philosophical debate against idealism versus a material dialectical historical understanding which means that this idealism, this philosophical idealism, is a worldview with, with no interest in posing an alternative to the capitalist social economic formation and has the capacity and, 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 and the imagination of, of uh, um, sort of, of, of giving us um, a lot of possibilities uh, within the, the um, capitalist um, social relations, which produces and reproduces and, 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 and perpetuates it. So um, in a dialectical materialist that it is centered on or, or, or centers class analysis, it, it, it allows us to interpret the world more adequately, but also enable us to strategize uh, for its um, social transformation. But um, as much as, as, as the concept of class is the cornerstone of, of Marxist theory, but uh, as I mentioned before, they, in, in, in Marx and, and, and Engels's work, they never produce a sort of a monographic work or, or, or a particular work on, on, on this topic. And, um, and, and, and also, as I mentioned, that it is in, in the, uh, the last volume of, of, of Capital that there is a little bit of, of, of the um, uh, explanation of, of, of the notion of, of the class. But um, I think that 
Even with that, Marx made a number of important theoretical claims about classes. And let me walk you through this. First is, is that um, for Marx, class like capital was not a thing, but a social relations. Rooted in this claim is another crucial one. The literary, and that is the, and, and it is this one, that the literary and political representatives of a class are not necessarily members of that class. This is very important and, and probably we can come back and, and, and discuss this uh, further. So Marx did not confer on the proletariat the role of quote unquote grave digger of capitalism because this class was more conscious, more militant or braver than peasants or other social groups that this role was, was given to that, uh, to, to this class. And then also the role that was given to the proletariat was due to the fact that this class is the only one that does not depend on ownership of property. And as such, it is the only class that can be the social base for building a classless society. And this is where, I mean, this ownership of the pro property and, and then if we want to expand it and, and, and go back to some of the, the texts uh, in, in Grundrisse or some of the, 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 the writings of Marx in Grundrisse and understand it in, in a more totality of, of, of it, we can see that it is the, the role of, 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 of the, the, uh, the labor, the workers, those who freely, and, and then in the quotation mark, sort of, of, of uh, exchange their labor power for wages and, and their position in production, consumption, distribution that sort of determines their, their class locations. But the most important point is, is that it is on, on the, the fact that this class does not own a, pro a property. So the ownership of the properties is very important. Equally significant is the claim that social classes and class struggle prevailed throughout the entire long era of, of, of socialism as, as well. So the idea that if we build socialism, it means that we will have a classless society is now hugely being debated and, 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 and challenged. But I, I think that it is in building communism that the proletariat will be able to abolish itself, but also all other classes. And um, I think that um, I'm gonna sort of move on because I, I um, I don't know how much time I have, Genevieve, but um, um, I think that I want to sort of uh, focus a bit on, on the uh, relationship between also the dialectical understanding of, of uh, uh, race and, and, and class, because I, I, I think that a lot of our readings are, are also focusing on, on, on that. So, the same as, as we need to look at um, sort of, of, of class as a socially, historically constructed, I think that we need to have a the dialectical materialist understanding of, of race as, as, and, and, and racism. And, and I think that it is in, 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 um, it's important to see that how race and, 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 and class. And then we, we can also argue that the same thing for, for um, gender, how they constitute each other, and, 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 and also in a very um, sort of dynamic, interrelated way that to the extent that we can uh, sort of argue that the way that class is raised and, and, and gendered, and it is not um, socially, historically, we cannot sort of of, of, of a um, uh, fragment 
uh, these or, or detach these relations from the capitalist social relations. So um, I think that the uh, racial relations and, and, and racism also constitute a social system that produces the condition of, of uh, its own reproduction and, and, and also white supremacy, the way that it enters into capitalist social relations. So um, I would say that since the end of, of, of Cold War, incessant massacres and, and, and especially um, I'm, I'm focusing on, on more contemporary moment and then also the, um, to be able to understand the condition of, of pandemic, um, incessant massacres, genocides, war crimes, and crimes against humanity have been identified also as ethnic, racial, national, and, and religious conflicts, rather than identifying these also as, as um, um, intimately connected to the rise of capitalist imperialism. And, and I think that it is true that these sort of, of, of um, as I call them, social cleavages, historical social cleavages have always provided grounds for conflict. People and, and a lot of analysts rarely question the reproduction and, 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 and uh, also um, the, um, the, the, these relationship and, and, and often reduce them to the, this type of, of, of um, identities, ethnicity, religion, and, 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 and racial uh, stereotyping. So I, I think that in the absence of class analysis and with the um, sort of, of, of a uh, this, uh, discounting of capitalism as a source of, of conflict, the contemporary world seems to be ruled um, only by this type of, of, of ethnic racial hatred and, and not by, by the fact that how capitalism is, is, is also um, using it and pushing all these in, uh, uh, differences in order to sort of, of, of give us the, um, the, the, the um, not let us to, to see the connections of, of, of all of these challenges uh, with, with the capitalist uh, uh, social uh, order. Um, and, and, and therefore, uh, how it's important to see the um, um, capitalism and, and, and also class relations as, as they, um, I mean, in this, the concept of, of relationship is, is very important. I think that, um, um, Genevieve, if I have time, what I would like to do is, is that to read a uh, paragraph from the um, examining the wreckage piece and, and, and then also to point out of, of this section um, in the empire's tracks um, that is in, important. And by doing so, I just also want to encourage all of us that how close reading is, is in, important and, and how we would like to sort of, of, of engage with this type of, of text readings that uh, sections that are important for you or, or you would like to, to change or, or not. Do I have time to do it, Genevieve? Yeah, so it's almost four o'clock. Um, I, think, I think you do have a little bit of time. Um, so I would encourage you to, to read those quotes. Okay, so uh, from the, thank you, from examining the, the uh, wreckages, um, um, I would like to read this section, which I, I thought that it was important. And here is the quote. Uh, they said that one should weep while reading Walter Rodney's How Europe Under, Underdeveloped Africa, or the chapters on primary accumulation in capital, volume one, not simply because these are past events, but because they are ongoing. 
the immense loss of life and humanity under the throes of capitalism is absolutely unimaginable in terms of the suffering it has caused and continues to cause. While we typically measure capital's destructive power by what profits are ripped at the expense of a large section of humanity, the African Marxist uh, Amilcar Cabral asks us to return to the source. And this returning to the source is very important. The source is what defines the historical nature of continued militant resistance that shapes certain struggles. But it is also the root of what could bloom into beauty if allowed to grow properly. Capitalism and imperialism have mal developed the continents of Africa and the Americas. Imagine what these vast continents could be like had they not suffered the crimes they have. Imagine the knowledge, art, books, science, and technology, the beauty of humanity that was lost and destroyed. We cannot change the past, but we certainly live in a present entirely structured by our past. And for that, we are responsible. So we must dream in this moment about what can grow in the absence of empire, knowing what we know. I think it is, it's, this is a, a very good way for us to think about our contribution to, this, uh, to the discussion in this working group. I also would like to, to suggest that it's important that chapter two of, of the empire's track is, um, is actually titled Modes of Relationship. And then also the argument here is, is, is that also understanding capital as social relations and not as thing. And then therefore to think about even infrastructure and railroads as social relations that is um, rooted in colonialism, capitalism, racism, the violence against women that was created in, 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 in that history. So thank you very much. I think that I'm going to stop here and uh, pass it on to Genevieve. Thank you, Sharsat.